So you're going to start with your black colored yarn for the hoof and you're going to, we're going to start with a magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go right under those two loops around your middle fingers, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. After you finish six single crochet into the magic circle, take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Don't worry if you don't get it all the way closed. You can always close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work so that you're working in rounds. Sometimes it's hard to see the stitch with the darker yarn, but you're going to go into that first stitch in the round. Grab both loops of that first stitch, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So two single crochet into every stitch around. And then when you're finished you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So now if you need to close the center of the magic circle just take and turn your work over and pull gently on the back loose yarn end and then that should close up the center nicely. Now we're going to continue making increased rounds or increasing the number of stitches in the round. Go ahead and grab your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. I just use one of my scraps of yarn. And then we're going to make a total of six increase rounds in chronological order. So the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round. Go ahead and take the yarn marker and move it up to where you left off. And for this next round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So for that last increase round you should have had 24 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and for the next increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So for that last round we had a total of 30 stitches in the round and I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each round because all you have to do is add six to the previous round. So we had 24 total stitches and so you add six to that that would give you 30 total stitches for that round. And that's because we started with six single crochet in the magic circle. So now for the next increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into four stitches. 
and then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then for the next increase round we have two more increase rounds left the next one is going to be one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then for the last increase round just make one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so now you should have a total of 48 stitches in the round and we finished all of the increase rounds so now you're just going to maintain the stitch, stitch count go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds so three rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around now when you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch go ahead and move your yarn marker up and now you're going to make 12 decrease stitches or 12 single crochet two stitches together so you take your crochet hook go into the next stitch bring up a loop now you have two loops on your hook go into the next stitch bring up a loop and now you have three loops on the hook yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through all three for one decrease stitch or one single crochet two stitches together so now we need a total of 12 of these we finished the first one I want to make a couple with you go into the next stitch bring up a loop go into the next stitch bring up a loop yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through all three for your second decrease stitch or second single crochet two stitches together so I want to make one more with you and again you're going to need a total of 12 of these single crochet two stitches together go into the next stitch bring up a loop go into the next stitch and bring up a loop yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitch together so after you finish your 12 single crochet two stitches together you can see how it kind of puckers the front of the hoof for you then you're just going to make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches back to the yarn marker then when you reach the yarn marker you're going to move the yarn marker up so now I have a total of 36 stitches in the round after making those 12 decrease stitches or they're also called single crochet two stitches together then go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds and then come back so only one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds so now you can see I made one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds so now go ahead continue making one single crochet in every stitch until you're in the back of the hoof we're going to change colors back here so you can see this is the front of the foot where you have your out pouching and then I'm in the back of the of the hoof so go ahead finish making only one single crochet until you're in the back of the hoof and then we're going to change colors so now go ahead and take your crochet hook and go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop now I have two loops on my crochet hook go ahead and bring up your main colored brown bring it through both loops then set your work down and then take the previous colored yarn and your loose yarn end and then just kind of tie pull on them and then tie a knot and then cut your previous colored yarn 
and then you're ready to crochet with your new colored yarn. You can go ahead and remove your yarn marker. So now you're going to be making one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 30 rounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one to start and then make a single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet in every stitch around until I have a total of 30 rounds completed with my new color. So after you finish your 30 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, you can go ahead and add craft stuffing. Make sure that you get stuffing into the paws so that you form the hoof. Actually, not the paws, the hoof. And this is what mine looks like. Then we're ready to close. And you can add more craft stuffing if, if you need to as you close. Then just take and move your yarn marker up to where you left off. And then you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make your decrease stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to where you have your yarn marker so one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and what we're doing is we're closing the top of the donkey leg so go ahead finish repeating that pattern one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker then for the next decrease round, move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And you can see how you're just gradually closing the top of the leg. Then you can see how you're almost closed. Then you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together as many as you can until you are almost closed. And then you're going to slip stitch it closed. I'm going to do that with you. So I'm almost closed. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch it closed. So I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And I'm just going to slip stitch all the way around until the leg is completely closed. I'm almost closed. Make one more. If I can get in there. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And you can see how nice the leg turned out. And then you're just going to bury your loose yarn end. Just take your tapestry needle, put the loose yarn end onto the tapestry needle, and then you're just going to go right where you finished off, and then go through and, and, and exit anywhere on the leg with the tapestry needle. Pull that loose yarn end through to bury it into the leg. Go ahead and cut it, and now you've finished one of your legs. You're going to need four of these, so go ahead, finish four of them, and then come back. 
So now we're going to attach the legs after you make the four of them. Go ahead and grab two of them that you want for the front legs. And then you're going to get your upholstery needle or tapestry needle. It's just a lot easier if you use your upholstery needle. And put the same colored yarn as the upper portion of the legs. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that the paw is facing forward. So that curve is facing forward. Take your upholstery needle and you're going to go through, I go about three rounds down from the top, three to four, and then go through the side of the front leg. And you want to come out on the opposite side at the same level. So just make sure that you're at the same level and then you come out on the opposite side and then just bring the yarn through and you want to leave a long loose, you want a fairly long l yarn because you're going to go through four times, actually two times and you'll have four strands. So you're going to go through twice and have four strands of yarn between the legs and the body. So you can see how I leave a long loose yarn end. Then you want to position your front leg to see where you want it to lie on the body. I usually use the ears as a landmark and then I want it midline either behind the ears or along the imaginary line from the ears and you don't want it too far forward and you don't want it too far back. So you want it in line and you want it about midway on the body and then you also want it lower than the back so you don't want it too high where you're above the back because the back legs need to be even with the front legs so once you find the position that you want for your legs then you're going to see where the yarn exits the leg and that's where you're going to enter the body so I'm going to enter the body about right here so I'm going to get my upholstery needle and I'm going to go right into the position that I want to enter the body with my upholstery needle. And then you're going to come out on the opposite side at the same level on the body and then just bring the yarn through the body you can see how I went in on the one side and then came out on the opposite side at the same level on the opposite side and then just pull the yarn through and you want to leave approximately one to two inches between the leg and the body and make sure you still keep your long loose yarn end on the opposite leg as well so you don't lose the yarn strand so approximately one to two inches and then once you exit the opposite side you're ready to go through the other leg. So again make sure the paws are facing forward and then you're going to go right into the top of the leg on the side and then come out on the opposite side at the same level on the opposite side of the leg. And again, you want approximately one to two inches between the body and the leg. And then once you exit the opposite side, you're going to go about a stitch. You want to stay a stitch away from where you exited the leg. So I'm going to go back beneath, a stitch beneath where I exited. And then come out a stitch away from where I entered the leg on the opposite side. And then you just pull the yarn through. Then you're going to go about a stitch away on the body. And then come out on the opposite side of the body about a stitch away from the entry.
and you can see how I leave about two inches between the leg and the body and then I'm going to go right back through the other leg and then come out the opposite side about a stitch away and I'm coming out underneath where I entered and then you can see how I have two yarn strands between the leg and the body and now you're going to repeat the whole process one more time so you're going to go a stitch over and then go back through and being careful not to cross the yarns you always want to be about a stitch away and try not to cross the yarns because you're going to be pulling on the yarn ends to cinch the legs against the body so go ahead finish going one more time through the legs and the body and then come back then you can see how I have four strands of yarn between the legs and the body then you're ready to take and pull on the loose yarn ends so you just kind of pull on the loose yarn ends if you meet any resistance don't continue pulling just let go and pull on one yarn strand at a time until you cinch the body the legs to the body then you just want to double check between the body and the legs make sure you don't have any loops and then you can just kind of pull on the yarn strands until you pull that loop away or lift up on the legs to kind of jiggle the yarn as you pull and cinch the legs to the body then you can see that I have no more loops between the body and the leg and then I double check the other one as well and then make sure that the legs are cinched snugly against the body and then once you're happy with the position and that you've gotten the legs attached to the body go ahead and tie a knot and then you can take and trim the loose yarn ends make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end to bury into your work then just take the loose yarn end put it onto your tapestry needle and then go right in where you tied your knot and then come out anywhere on the opposite side of the leg then you can take and trim the loose yarn ends this is how my front legs look and they move which is what I like about this method if you don't like the dimples I'll show you a way that you can cover the dimples and now we're going to attach the back legs and then I'll show you how to cover the dimples later in the video tutorial now you're going to attach the back legs the same way make sure that the paw is facing forward and then when you enter the body you want to make sure that the legs are in line with the front legs so you want them the dimple on the front leg to be in line with the dimple on the back leg and then you also don't want the back legs up too far past the back of the donkey so you want about midway and and level with the front legs you don't want the back legs to be lower than the front legs and you don't want them to be higher than the front legs so try to get them as even as you can and then the other thing is you don't want the back legs to be on the butt or past the back of the donkey so you want it to be I would leave approximately three to four 
stitches between the leg and the back of the donkey. And then the rest is the exact same way as the front legs. So go ahead, attach your back legs, and then come back. This is what mine looks like on the back before I cinch the legs to the body. So you can get an idea. This is the side panel, this is the back of the body, and there's the top of the body. So I just wanted to show you what the donkey should look like if you attached the legs correctly. So you can see that I have one donkey, donkey standing, and then I have the other one sitting. You can see that with the standing donkey that I have the legs even in the back and the front. The paws are facing forward and the back legs are not too far past the back of the body. Also from the front you can see that I don't have the front legs uneven. They're both even on both sides, the left and the right. So before we start the tail I just want to show you another little trick and you can use your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn to do this but sometimes you may have a large puffy portion above the the legs so to help get rid of that you can take and pinch the piece together and take your tapestry needle and you can start from behind and then go through and mine is about I would say about an inch half inch to an inch and then just bring the yarn through and leave a long loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying the loose yarn end and then you're just going to go about a small stitch over back towards where you first came through and then you're going to pull on both yarn strands to kind of cinch the, the top portion together and then you can tie a knot and it kind of flattens the top part makes it look a little bit better and then you can just go right across and then just kind of make small stitches across and what you're doing is you're just flattening the top portion only so this is the first time I've actually done this with my amigurumi and I'm actually liking the way it looks because I like the movable legs so if you like the movable legs like me and you want to kind of flatten the top portion a little bit this is how I did it and then I'm just going to sew straight across I'm making small stitches so you can't see them on the right side and then once you get all the way across you can sew back to where you started to tie a knot. Now another thing is if you notice that you have an opening where you can see the craft material, I don't mine is pretty closed, but if you have a little bit of craft material showing, then you can just take and weave across the craft stuffing that's showing and kind of bury the yarn through it and at the same time you're covering any craft stuffing that may be showing. And then you want to head back to where you first started and you can either sew again back across or you can kind of weave across the top getting rid of any craft stuffing that might be showing. and you're just flattening the top portion only and then once you get back to where you started you can tie a knot and then you can bury your loose yarn end and I just buried my loose yarn end right in the back portion
and then you can see how it flattens the top portion and then I'll show you how you can make a cover too later but first we're going to make you're going to repeat this with all of the legs and then I'm going to show you how to make the tail now for the tail you're going to start with the main color as your donkey and you're going to start with a magic circle so just drape the yarn across your four fingers use your thumb to stabilize wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb and then you're going to take your crochet hook go under those two loops around the middle fingers bring up a loop yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle Then you can take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet, and then you're just going to close up the magic circle. And then just turn your work. We're going to work in rounds. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around. So two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. and then come back. Then just move your yarn marker up and you can close the center of the magic circle if you need to by pulling on that loose yarn end on the back. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 22 rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch around for 22 rounds and then come back. After you finish the 22 rounds, then you can go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch over. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to sew the tail on the donkey. But first, before we sew the tail on, we're going to make the pom-pom for the end. So before you sew the pom-pom onto the end of the tail, you can add a little craft stuffing to the tail. Then just take your tapestry needle and then right on the tip, go ahead and sew the pom-pom in place. I just took the two long ends and then I just kind of went in and out sewing the tip and I want to make sure that I don't mess up the hair at all so I just go in and out just sewing and you can go up into the tail too and then back down into up into the pom-pom and then back down into the tail And then I usually take the yarn strands that I used for sewing and then just go right back to where they're both together. Then you can take and tie a knot. And then I usually just trim it and it blends in with the rest of the tail. And then your tail is ready to sew onto the donkey. And you can trim the hairs if you need to, if you have one that's sticking out longer. And then take the tail, and then you're going to lay the tail flat so that the opening end is flat and centered on the back of the donkey, just above the back panel on the body. And then you're just going to take and sew. Make sure that none of the stuffing is showing. And then you just take and sew the tail in place. And I just sewed across the top edge of the tail onto the back of the body.